the game. It's a red stick. Real-time rendering is great, but there are still some limitations. If you have tried to use the default Glass BSD F shader, it doesn't work quite well. You can enable screen space refraction, but the glass is still not perfect. And even the glass shader itself is not perfect. You also cannot see glass through other glass, for example through window. EV is not physically accurate, which means that to achieve realism you have to use some trickery. And that is exactly how I will create this glass 2.0 shader and showing how it works. In the second part I will show you where you can download it and how to use it. And in the last part I would like to show you a few amazing cycles, glass shaders, which you can download for free. So let's go. Let's talk a bit about the Glass BSDF shader. I think it's important to understand how it works before we start making more complex notes. First is the distribution dropdown menu. These values are used in cycles on different kinds of surfaces. The sharp setting is always sharp and the others can be used with roughness. It doesn't work with EV so it doesn't matter which you pick. I recommend staying with the default. Next is basically just the color of the surface. Roughness controls how much rough the object appears. Every object is actually very shiny, but micro details and imperfections reflecting light to all directions and the object seems rough. You can achieve similar result by using noise texture in pump input and scale it to make it look rough from distance. IOR or index of refraction tells us how the light is refracting through the object and that there is a normal input to add some bump to it. There are some limitations in the EV. For example, if you check the screen space refraction checkbox, the ambient occlusion won't be affecting the surface anymore. I think now we are educated about glass BSDF in Blender. Congratulations, here is your degree. Now let's improve the shader. Very important is preparing the EV settings. For us is the most important setting here. Screen space reflection. This basically allows you to see reflections. And under this setting we have to check refractions. This allows us to use the refractions globally. Now we have to just mark the object as refractive in his material settings. Let's create a new material and call it glass 2.0. Add the glass BSDF. It is basically a building block of this shader. We want to mark this shader as refractive in the option panel. Now we can see through a bit. Important thing to mention is that when the object is marked as refractive, the ambient occlusion doesn't work with it. Just keep that in mind. The biggest limitation of EV is that we cannot see refractive objects through others. So you cannot see through window for example. Basically you cannot see through multiple refractive objects. Let's try to make a quick fix. Just add the edge shader and combine the glass with the transparent node. Nothing is happening. Hmm. Why not? EV cannot handle transparency until you allow it. Mark the object transparent and choose the blend mode. Here you can see how these blend modes looks like. The slowest but the most accurate is the alpha harsht. So just choose it and use it on shadows as well. Transparency is on 100%. By making the color darker we can decrease the transparent effect. Now you can kind of see through multiple refractive objects. But we can do better. Mix these two shaders. Make sure that the transparent color is 100% white. And to control which part is transparent, use the Fresnel node. It is basically the IOR. So the edges of the object will be pure glass, but the center will be more transparent. This is how the Fresnel node looks like. White will be glass, black will be transparent. Also make sure that the transparent shader is first and not realizing it in the middle of recording. Fresnel now works like thickness of the glass. The transparent part is too transparent. So I added a matte note and multiplied the Fresnel IOR value with some high number like 30. You can understand that value as transparency of the glass because we are multiplying the color gets brighter and brighter. To keep maximum value at one, enable clumping. Now is the glass transparent and you can see through even the backside of the glass. This is where you can eventually stop. This easy setup allows you to tweak a lot of values. You can change the color, thickness, opacity, IOR, roughness and normal. Remember that you can tweak these values as you want. 
even the IOR. You can forget on this and try to replicate this. You can understand light as combination of three channels, red, green and blue. And if you add these colors on top of each other, white light is created. Dispersion is just a shifting of these channels, which we can imitate by shifting the IOR of each channel. I've learned this technique from Grant Wilk from CG Cookie, so if you wanna learn more about dispersion, go and watch it. I think it's an amazing video. He actually uses it for cycles, but I found it more useful in Eevee where you can appreciate this effect in real time. So, let's change the color of these shaders to red, green and blue, and then, as I said, add them on top of each other by adding the add node. You can see that it does look the same as the default glass shader, however, now we can control each shell individually. To see the dispersion effect, let's shift the red channel by subtracting 0 0.02 to IOR and add the same number to blue channel. Here we go! Dispersion! To make it easier to use, I map the IOR value from all shaders to one value and by adding a math node, I am just adding and subtracting value. And with another value, I am controlling how much I want to shift these IORs. Okay, so that is cool, but we've lost one very important thing. Control over the glass color. So my idea is selecting the overall color, split it into RGB values and tell each glass shader how much of each color we need. Add a RGB node, that is our glass color, then separate it by separate RGB node. And now, when we look through each channel, we can see white. Why isn't it red? Well, the separate RGB node outputs just how much of each color is there. White means that the red color is there on 100% and black means that in our color is no red at all. We want to control strength of each color channel by this output. So it mix RGB and set the color to red. Selected color must be multiplied by separate RGB value. Now you can see how much of red color is in any color. Now just duplicate this for all channels. Finally, we have control over color. First, I want to say that you can download this shader on BlendSwap. Link is in the description. You are allowed to use it freely on commercial or non-commercial projects with this CCO license. And if you use it, you can tag it by using hashtag Glass 2.0. I am very excited to see what you can do with it. Also, you can improve it and share your improvements. This shader is far from perfection. So, here it is. You can change the overall color, the dispersion effect, thickness, opacity, roughness and IOR. Which is very useful because sometimes when I was trying to imitate the cycles glass, I had to set this value very low. Eevee is not physically accurate so don't be afraid of changing it. Usually when I plug an image texture into roughness I am using a color ramp node. This node can be in this case replaced by map range node so I implemented it into the node group itself. Here is the normal output. Usually if you want to add a bump to the shader you can do this. To make work a bit easier I implemented this node inside the node group as well. So you can now just plug your map and tweak strength and the distance value. When I am using this shader for animation, I made one renderer with cycles and then trying to reproduce the look of the glass. It is important to use reference images. Here is a simple method how you can save this shader. It allows you to access it every time without appending it over and over again. Just open Blender and don't move with anything. Then go into Shading Panel. Make a new material for default cube and append the glass 2.0. Then add it into this shader and check the little shield icon. That means that Blender will keep this in memory even if there is no object using it. Then delete this shader. Go back into the layout. Still, don't move with anything and save this scene as default scene. Now you can close the window. No, we don't want to save and run Blender again. Now you can just add this shader and you don't have to append it every time. Also, don't forget to change the blend mode and check screen space refraction. Or you can just save it as separate material, it's up to you. Now I have to show you something so cool. This is an amazing alternative for cycles from this guy. And this shader from this guy is just great, specifically the caustic effect is amazing. I highly recommend these shaders if you are working with cycles. There are probably some other shaders, but these are CCO, so you can use them as you wish. You can download them from BlendSwap, link is in the description.
Now you can turn everything into glass.